Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we are live. All right, so Melody Miners tells us that we are live. Thanks everyone for joining us for another edition of The Art of Custom. Last time we uh, got together, we were talking about construction financing. This time we're gonna kind of take a little bit of a different path, but along the same, li same lines of the conversation, we're gonna be talking about value engineering and how this really is a good time to build as long as you work hard with your architect partner, your builder partner, and, and really pay attention to the design of the house and what we call value engineering. And the reason I said we is because seated over to my left is uh, Jeff Day, not only an, a real good friend of mine, but he's also an exceptional architect here in the St. Louis area. Jeff and I have known each other for close to 15 years, done some uh, wonderful projects together, some high profile projects together. And uh, I don't think there's a person who is better to have a part of this conversation than Jeff because he understands the importance of communicating with clients, helping them understand how to value engineer the plans. So whether your budget is 500,000 or 5 million, you can go ahead and build. Jeff, it's nice to have you with us. Yeah, thanks for the invite. This no, no problem at all. Hey, I've got, to, I've got to ask you to pause for one moment because Melody Miner is behind the camera, but you'll hear us refer to her occasionally and she might even pop in with a question or two. So Melody, come around this side of the camera real quick and, and just say hi to everybody. That's Melody. <laughs> so, uh, so if we do refer to Melody or if she uh, throws us some questions, um, I wanted to put a face with the name and we would we would welcome your questions as we go along so feel free to ask them but Jeff when I say value engineering what does that mean to you as an architect I think the long and short for me is uh, trying to get everything that a client needs and wants into a simpler package okay and one would hope that that simpler <laughs> package then adds value by reducing cost so I'm gonna write down the word simple because I think if there's one takeaway from today, if you can simplify your design, it is absolutely going to help the cost. But Jeff, I don't wanna scare people away that might think I've got a million dollars or I've got 800,000 or whatever the budget might be. I don't wanna build a simple box. Can, right. you, can you build a beautiful home on a budget through value engineering? Absolutely. Um, so <clears throat> I think where people get lost uh, is in all the weeds of dimensions of lumber, dimensions of building products, you know, everything works kind of in a two foot increment, right? So uh, a lot of these homes, you'll design them 41 feet, six inches wide or something ridiculous like that. And you're not thinking through, okay, well, 42 feet makes more sense or 40 foot makes more sense. So that's, I think that's step one in all of this, right? Think through wasted two-by material, wasted sheet goods of plywood, drywall, even siding, right? Uh, but then beyond that, it's a matter of uh, appendages on the house, right? You can, you can build a simple box uh, and then put a creative appendage for the garage or creative appendage for a side porch, front porch, rear porch, and then you get to the upper level, whether that's a, a, an actual second floor where you can maybe introduce some cantilevers, again, in these two foot dim dimensions, uh, or push and pull the roof structure itself. If it's just a ranch, we've done simple boxes where you take a ranch home, push and pull some of the roof trusses, doesn't add excessive costs, certainly not as simple as just a basic big triangle or pyramid on the, the top of the house, but you can push and pull that and find creativity in that. Uh, and, and then there's there's areas where, you know, we've done attic trusses on a million houses if we've done it on one. Those are areas where you can get a little more creative as well and not only reduce the primary footprint of a home and move these, you know, bedrooms upstairs, but now maybe there's a little bit steeper pitch to the roof and monies saved are still in existence, you'll spend a little bit more on a steeper roof, but you're still saving money moving things upstairs and reducing the footprint of not only the foundation, but the walls and the roof structure. So there's, there's so many things that people just kind of don't think about in that design process. And that's why if you come to the table with the builder and with the architect, which is what we recommend, especially with value engineering, but quite frankly, to have a better, um, a better project, a better experience along the right. way, 
You mentioned um, added trusses just real quickly for the audience. That's where you actually build your rooms, your, your second floor rooms into the trusses. So instead of having to build exterior walls, raise them and put the roof trusses on top, you can actually manipulate the trusses themselves and, and build attic trusses. So you then don't have to build the walls. You come in and you can, you can finish the space around it much more economically. And those and, are built in a factory. Yes. Already with the room inside, shipped to the site, craned in place so that the labor and everything else is just greatly reduced on those, which is, that's a huge deal. It is, and there, there's a lot of other, as we call them, tricks to the trade, right. even when it comes to the foundation, and then you fall to the second floor. But some of the things that I look for as a builder when we start thinking about uh, budgets, and we're very budget conscious. I know that, that Jeff and I, when, when we work together with our various teams, we always want to know where the budget is. What is your budget? Be realistic with your builder and architect because we truly can plan a home around that budget and kind of work our way backward. Um, but we want to know what the budget is up front because it helps us understand where the starting point is and then we can design the home accordingly. F full disclosure, it's been very difficult and, and you'll, you know, we talked about this before we went live. This past year has been much more difficult though, primarily because of the pandemic and what the pandemic has done to the construction industry. Year over year, our prices, um, the National Association of Home Builders um, recently did a study saying that the construction prices year over year are up, depending upon where you live, a minimum of 20% and a maximum of 49% per year, which is mind boggling. We've been building for 18, you've been designing for about that same amount of time. We've never experienced anything like this. So we are having a much more difficult time um, when, it, when it truly comes to understanding where these prices are going. We know they're going to back off eventually, but I guess the point is that, that right now is, is a critical time to try to truly value engineer a home. Right. And that's, that's what you strive for with every client you work with. Yeah, uh, you know, you, uh, <clears throat> you mentioned we, we want to know what the price of the home wants to be for yes, the client. Yes, wants right? to be. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it doesn't always work out that way. These past two years have been so crazy that if you don't approach it with an ideal of not only budget, but making this as simple as possible, still attractive, you know, I don't want to put my sign out in the front yard while it's being built. Uh, and so we're, we're pretty uh, touchy about that. But if you can show people a, a more creative way to play Tetris, really, I like to use that as a reference, the old Nintendo game. You're, you're taking these rooms and you're fitting them inside of this box, but you can do it in a creative way. You know, we have that most recent project where we were given kind of a base plan of what the client kind of wanted. And once we saw the plan, knowing it was over budget, we, we knew we could creatively simplify it. And, and we've done that. And this is a, a simple rectangle home now. But when you walk in this home, the way it's all going to be laid out inside is going to be super creative. The outside, we're going to push and pull the roof and whatnot, you know, as we're fleshing out the final design on that. It's on my desk for review. Um, you know, this is going to be a really attractive craftsman style home. And the homeowner never saw it as this simple box. But once it was all put together as a simple box, it started to take shape in his mind and made more sense. And, and probably cut, what would you guess, 15, 20% off the budget maybe? Uh, probably 20. And, and what Jess referring to is a project that we've been working on now for quite a while uh, in the West St. Louis County area. And the homeowner had been working with an architect and we just couldn't control cost with the one design. And so the, arch the, uh, the, the homeowner was looking for a set of fresh eyes. And so we, of course, communicated with Jeff and Jeff very quickly was able to sketch up some floor plans that immediately fit with what the homeowner was looking for and then greatly simplified the, the, the build cost. So sometimes it does take a second set of eyes. I know that over the past few years, we've had several clients come to us kind of devastated that the original plans they designed with the architect were way over budget and they needed our help in value engineering. Now, we were able to do it for them and I don't wanna say that we've never run into the, into the issue of over designing ourselves because we've been a part of it but what we always try to be very proactive on is okay we're high but let's then work together as a team just like we're doing with with our, our one client and value engineer the project so 
I tell people this, that if you've had a bad experience, don't give up. Um, be persistent, um, you know, shoot for your dreams and get with either your current builder or maybe you need to find another builder, an architect, but just, just don't give up on your dream because truly through what we call the value engineering, you can make that come true. And I think too many times people get discouraged up front and, and walk away. Yeah, some of, the, uh, <clears throat> some of the easiest changes that we've seen over the past year, we've had a, a handful of clients that have come to us wanting a new home and they want all the bedrooms on the main floor. They want a ranch want style a ranch, home. Yeah. And when you start to just sprawl these things out, it's more foundation, it's more roof, you know, and so, uh, and, and in some ways, shapes, and forms, it's more exterior walls, which means more windows, which means more siding and insulation, and so on and so forth. And, you know, one example we have in, in Chesterfield right now, West County, um, these folks wanted a ranch home, and we're like, well, we can, we can draw it that way and price it that way. But if you'd be willing to take the additional secondary bedrooms, keep your main floor master, take the secondary bedrooms and move them up, there's a great opportunity to save money. We don't know what that number is, but you could absolutely save money. Well, we drew it the first way, and then we drew it the second way. You know, like you said, come back to the table and yeah, don't just revisit it, have the hard conversations, and the bulk of everything you're, you, you want will still be there. It's just that you're moving maybe your kids upstairs. But I'll be honest with you, I've got four kids. When they're teenagers, they don't want to be near you. Yeah. You know, they want to be able to and stay up and absolutely. hang out or whatever. And then when they're gone, you can zone that area off. That's so right. it's, you Heating know, you're cooling. Is cooling. Is exactly. Is. But the yeah. delta between the first design and then moving the bedrooms up, there was a savings almost $40,000 wow. in that case. That's significant. Yeah, that is. So, uh, you know, you could buy nicer things or not borrow that money or go buy a car to put in your new garage. I mean, there's all these options. <laughs> all these options to spend that money. <laughs> hey, since we're talking pricing and since we're talking design, um, especially with a lot of the homes that we're building out in Northern Utah right now, people are really looking for more contemporary designs, whether it's mountain contemporary or That's here, right. kind of a, uh, um, like, almost like a, a, a Frank Lloyd Wright contemporary looking. A lot but, of cases. Yeah, but those homes do actually cost a little bit more to build. Why is Correct. that? Well, okay, there's a number of reasons. Uh, <laughs> first off, there's a lot of contractors out there that are used to residential construction, okay? And when they see a, an ultra modern building, they think, oh, this is a commercial project. Mm -hmm. And so labor costs and things are maybe estimated a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. The other side of that though is the reality is when you're doing these contemporary homes, a lot of times you want the thinner frame windows and you want uh, higher end exterior finishes. You're not gonna put horizontal vinyl siding that you would put on a colonial home on this contemporary home, right? So now you're almost obligated to start looking at a lot of these fiber cement substitutes to real wood, like redwood siding that might be used heavily on the West Coast. We've got a fake version of that, it's fiber cement, you know, so you start moving into those kinds of settings, you move into the, the lower profile windows, they have to be built stronger because mm -hmm. the frames are so thin, all of those things start to add cost. And, and then, you know, I think as contemporary architecture picks up momentum here in the Midwest, you know, as it moves from east and west coast to the middle, uh, the volume will go down or mm -hmm. I should say True. the volume will go up and the cost will we'll go, go down, down. Uh, which is what we've seen with you know all kinds of, of different things. I mean, it, it, uh, craftsman style was a big deal when I started my company 15 years ago. Yep. We and built many of your craftsman style designs. Absolutely, and, and we saw over time the products, you know, the prefabricated columns that you might put on there and the the uh, divided light windows that maybe they're three over one or they're four over one and whatnot, all of those started to reduce in cost a little bit as the volume of those houses started going up. So uh, I don't think they'll ever be, I don't think contemporary homes will ever be the least expensive way to build, right. but I think, I think in the Midwest anyway, we'll start seeing that come down just a little bit. So again, we, we invite you, if you we're going to be um, on a little, few more minutes, and, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. We did have a very interesting question 
And the question, Jeff, that, that we as builders get asked a lot, and I'm sure you as an architect would probably get asked the same question occasionally is, if you're going to build a house and you know that there are an endless number of plans online that you can look through and fall in love with, the question is, is it better to start by purchasing those plans online and can you do it that way? Or, or do, you, do you need to go through an architect to have them design the home? Sure, so we have a lot of clients come to us with those plans, okay? So and they purchased them online, thousand bucks, two thousand bucks, something like that. Right, thinking maybe that'll save them money. But what they find, and, and like there, there, are, there are cities in and around St. Louis, right, St. Louis County, I'll say, that don't require a licensed architect. Okay. And that's the case with, with municipalities all around the country, too. Yeah, I mean, there's places where you absolutely cannot get it approved without an architect. And there's areas where they, they say you only need it for a septic or for a well. And, uh, and so we've had clients come to us that have bought these online, but they were designed by a company out of, you know, Northeast, mm -hmm. let's say, Missouri, uh, Northeast uh, United States. Well, they built totally differently than we do, right? Yes, do. And down south, they built totally different than we do. We love our basements in Missouri, right? Texas, not so much. Dry land, expands and contracts, they don't want basements. Now, it'd be great to have one down there because yeah. the temperature would be cooler, but <laughs> not a big deal to them, right? And in and, and most southern states, they're using more concrete block foundations than doing a slab on grade. Well, they come to us with this set of plans and say, well, our builder says he can't build these. And then I go through and I explain why, right? The problem with that is it's kind of a, a total redraw for us, mm -hmm. right? The other thing we have found is that uh, we've had clients that will pay extra and buy the AutoCAD files. Well, the AutoCAD AutoCAD file, is a program that you use. Drafting software. Drafting software. That's right, to draw the plans. And literally every single one of those we've had, the plans do not match the elevations of the house. And so there's a redraw. But then it's exacerbated by the idea that sometimes they use just one layer. You can pick an electrical layer and all the electrical parts are drawn on that. You can draw a structural layer with only structural. You can turn these off and on. Well, we've gotten these sets of plans where all of that is on one layer. It's all on the same layer. So you can't turn anything off. And so now we've got to spend the time to not only put everything on the right layer, but then probably correct and coordinate. Uh, so there's a lot of challenges that come with it. I think the, the most important challenge though is that if it's not drawn the way you build it in St. Louis, you're not gonna get a solid price from a builder. He's gonna guess on everything, and then you just have to deal with the aftermath of that, you know? Yeah, and you also mentioned structural engineering because that's a very <clears throat> important component. That changes all, all across the country depending Absolutely. upon snow load and wind right. and earthquake and all sorts of things. So I think to Jeff's point, what we found the most, uh, most successful way of doing it is not purchasing the plans, but using the plans that you see online as inspiration. Print them off, bring them to the builder, bring them to the architect and say, this is what we want to build. We want to start with this floor plan. We want to tweak it this way. We like this elevation. That will save you time because the way that, that you all work, most architects work, is it's an hourly rate up front during the, the schematic design phase, right. right? So if you're going to save them time by saying, this is the house we want to build, that's where you're gonna save your money because you'll end up spending more in the long run because of the structure and, and to manipulate the plans that you purchased online to meet the local codes, whether you're building here, Utah, California, Washington, it doesn't matter. Everybody has local codes that have to be met. That's why the plans online are more difficult to make work. I'm not saying you can't do it, but it's been our experience that it's it's more difficult to, to make that work, right? And the, yeah, and the other reality to, to, to be understood is that those are copyrighted designs, right? Yes. And so when you come to your builder or your architect, you can't use those verbatim. Uh, we'd love to have a conversation about how they think they're gonna live in the house and mm -hmm. how our other past 200 clients this past year are living in their homes 
so that they get a kind of a, a full understanding of what's possible with the home. Mm -hmm. So you really want to look at it for room adjacencies and things like that. Uh, sometimes you're going to find a house online with a west facing dining room. That's not a good idea because you don't want to eat dinner when the sun's blasting through. So you want to have that full conversation about how you're going to live in that home. And it may very well make the new plan dissimilar to the one you brought in, right. but it's absolutely great for talking purposes. And then that really was a great question. We thank you very much for that. And again, we'll be here just a couple more minutes if any other questions come up. Um, since we're talking pricing, the last time we were, we did our Art of Custom uh, live, we talked with Trisha McConkey, who's one of our lenders from the St. Louis area. We were talking about why now is a good time to build, despite the fact that every time you turn on the nightly news, you hear about lumber prices spiking and construction costs going up and, and the cost to build a new home between that 20 and 49%. Um, I want to kind of circle back around because we've had a few changes since then. For example, you and I were talking here just a few minutes ago, lumber prices, lumber futures, meaning lumber that will be purchased in the future, those prices are way down from where they were. Lumber is measured in 1,000 feet of, uh, they, they stack, Technically what they would do is they would just measure a thousand lineal feet of, of lumber and then and establish a value for that lumber. Before the pandemic, it was somewhere in the three to 400 price range per thousand feet. Um, at its peak back just a couple of months ago, it was at $1,700 per thousand board feet, which is just mind boggling. So the futures recently came out showing the lumber futures down in that 900 range. So as you can see, there's been a pretty big step back in lumber prices that will be passed on in the future. We hope someday that it'll settle closer to that four, five, six, seven range again. We don't know. Um, copper is another one that, that really shot up quickly. We're seeing that was because of a supply demand issue that started to ease off. So our electricians are saying that that running of your electrical wires is going to that the cost of that's going to come down a little bit. But we talked about this, that most other trades, like there's been roofing, there's been concrete, there's been steel, there's been you know drywall, everything is up in, in the construction industry. And it's kind of setting, according to my trades, this is the new norm. So they don't really expect to see many pricing decreases with some of these other construction specific material. Um, so from, a, from, from our conversation earlier, if lumber prices are backing off, and some of these other prices are going to kind of stay where they are, that to me would prompt somebody to say, okay, with low interest rates, now's a good time to build. And you agree with that? I do. I, uh, you know, some of the things that I think are going to happen is as we start to ease out of, uh, you know, the unemployment and everything, and people start getting back to work, production is going to go up, mm -hmm. right? So yes. they'll be able to handle larger volumes, which means pricing can come down So. Uh, and uh, I think that ultimately what you have to be thinking in terms of is one, if, if the numbers are coming down on the value of you know, goods, but then the interest rates are going up, you got to strike in the right location. But then I think the other reality is, is if you're waiting and everybody else isn't, your builder might not have time for you, right? Yeah, valid point. Yeah, and so you, you have to think in terms of, well, we'll wait for things to go down, but then if interest rates are going up and all these other people are still packing in projects and you know the hips pipeline in this case, you may say, well, we're 18 months out before we can start. And who knows what it looks like in 18 months. If they come to you in six months and you say we're 18 months out, that's two years from today, what does it look like? We don't know. According to uh, the National Association of Home Builders, interest rates are, are going to ease their way up over the next year to year and a half. Right. But they think by 2023 is, is really when the, the largest uptick might occur. Mm -hmm. So my personal opinion so is you do have that window. Yeah. Yeah. You have that window that if you want to start planning a home, allow yourself three to four months design time, yep. then you have a month of budgeted permit. Yep. So you decide to build a home today, not only that, you have to find a lot, and you have to, you know, so there's a lot of things that go into it. So we typically tell everybody, four to six months up front, by the time you find the lot, design the home, permit it, budget it, get ready to build. And then depending upon the size of the home, it can take anywhere from eight to 12 months for the actual construction. So if you're thinking about building before interest rates pop up, and while we see some, some easing on some of our 
construction costs, now is a perfect time to contact a builder in your area. Um, I always, if, if people are looking for builders and architects, I always say a great way to do that. Um, I know that every local home builders association has kind of drop down menus and they have members that are on those menus. I think it's a great way to find a builder. Those builders are committed to the industry. Um, they're committed to continuing education. They're committed to you know their, their community and, and giving back to their community. So I always recommend starting with your local home builders association, find their drop down list and, and find a builder that way. What's a great way to find an architect? Well, let me add to that. Just as important, they're also builders from the home builders association are committed to pushing the pricing down. Bingo, yeah, you're right I about mean, they're that. They're fighting tariffs and all of these kinds of yeah. things, which yeah. helps all the consumers. So uh, best way to find an architect, uh, you know, most of our work comes word of mouth, uh, which is certainly a great way. Uh, great but, way to find a builder too, Mike. Yeah, but I think with, with Google, you can actually make a list of the things you want in an architect. Architect, sustainable design, craftsman style, modern, whatever, and search those things in your area and right. see what yeah. comes up. You know, don't don't just go for the the one that shows up at the top of Google because they're paying for AdWords, right? <laughs> Do the homework and find the guys. Although there. I might brag on Melody for a couple of minutes here because we don't pay and Melody has its homes ranked pretty darn high. There. Well, yeah, but you chain her to the desk and you <laughs> no, don't let her no, go no, home. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. Hey, um, before She's we go, the hardest worker in your firm. She is. A, she's an exceptionally hard worker, and we we love Melody, right? Yes. She's blushing. She's she blushing. feels loved. <laughs> um, another real good question came along. This is right up our alley. Uh, the, the question was, you know, what are some of the benefits to considering building a uh, SIPS home versus just a, a traditionally built a stick built home? We have both done it. Our active house project in Webster Grove a few years ago was a, was a SIPS home. Right. So SIPS costs more, no doubt about it, but yes. there are some benefits. You're a high performance, you're a green, yes. sustainable um, um, designer, architect. Give me your take on it. Uh, candidly, I think the biggest benefit is how quickly they go together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're, you're given a, a, a road map, a paint by number road map, and you drop these panels in place and you bolt it all together which it, it saves you quite a bit of time. They're also prepared in a factory, which means they're gonna be a lot more durable, they're gonna be a lot more straight, right, than just But let, let me just add something there. You have to be extremely well planned because they're planning Absolutely. plumbing chases, I mean, the windows, and right. if, if you miss something, it's not it's easy hard to modify. Hard to modify in the field. Yeah. In Dogtown here in St. Louis City, we did a SIPS home right next to a framed home. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have errors in the field. And it was way easier to correct a field framed home than it was. It was the same exact home uh, mirrored. But, you know, it's way easier to, to correct a field frame home. So you absolutely are right. You have to be on point with everything. And, and by the way, SIPS stands for Structural Insulated Panels. You basically have uh, two layers of sheathing on the outside and the inside with a, a thick core of, um, core of foam on, on the inside. And, and but it's, it's, a, it's a stud wall. It's a stud foam, wall with the foam, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So what, what, where do you come down on this whole pricing issue? Yes, it goes together more quickly, so you're saving financing costs. But it's been our experience that SIPS, while they perform exceptionally well, from a standpoint of efficiency, from the standpoint of acoustics, everything that, that, that goes along with them, it's been our experience that you cost more. Is it worth right. that extra cost? Uh, not in my opinion. Okay. I think that uh, Flash and Bat, which you and I... Yes, we do. Know. Flash and Bat is using a combination of foam and traditional insulation on a house. Yeah, fiberglass bats. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you and I have built, I would bet, every building envelope type except hay bale. I've never uh, done that. <laughs> not real popular in St. Louis. Uh, maybe a little too granola for the Midwest. But, uh, you know, we have found that the flash and bat actually performs at just a fraction less than the SIPs. And the other reality is with the SIPs, you've got to come back out and seal everything anyway. Right. So there's an insulator subcontractor involved in some capacity anyway. So. 
Uh, for my money, I think flash and bat would probably be the way to go unless I needed to be under roof quickly because of weather or whatever. But you could also, which I agree with you on that assessment, but you could also have your, your wall panels, I'm sorry, you could also panelize your walls frame in the wall, factory sure. and bring them out. It's, sure. it's, it's, it's like framing, framing them in the field, only that's done in the factory <coughs> as well. So um, I agree with you 100% on it. We've done SIPs, but I, I like your assessment of, of some sort of upgraded insulation package, which reminds me, you, these are great questions, and if you're looking for builders and designers, architects who understand high performance and, and green, if you will, um, it makes a difference. Make sure you interview your builder. Make sure you interview your architect. It's a science to what we do and how these homes go together. Uh, just because someone puts in, you know, um, high efficiency lights or high efficiency, you know, or, or you know, cost savings um, appliances doesn't make them a green builder. So just understand that. I know Melody's giving us the wrap, but before we go, Melody, I have to mention real quick, uh, Chris Pettigo is our director of construction, and he reminded me that Jeff Day truly is a full service architect. We have a client building in Lake St. Louis, and tell him real quick the story. Well, I've, I've got a lot of friends, but <laughs> we, awesome. uh, we showed up for a site meeting, Chris and the client and I, and, uh, and then we decided we'd go find some air conditioning and start sketching out the roadmap for the house. Uh, but en route from the lot to a, a restaurant on the lake, we, uh, I texted my, my buddy that lives there and he came and picked us up, Mike Miller, shout out to Mike, came and picked us up in the pontoon boat and let the clients see their lot from the lakeside, which they had not seen yet, which That's, was kind of fun. That is a full service architect. Thank you guys very much. It's been a pleasure. By the way, I need to, uh, to let everybody know that if, you, if you're looking for ways to simplify your house or looking for some ideas or and all, we do on our website, HibsHomesUSA.com, have a uh, document called Nine Ways to Simplify Home Design and Save. Look that up. Jeff Day, your, uh, your uh, website address. JeffDayLLC.com. So it's J-E-F-F-D-A-Y-L-L-C.com. Melody Miners, thank you for coordinating this. Thank you everyone for, for joining us. And uh, look for another scheduled of Art of Custom Live coming up next month. Not sure of the topic yet, but it'll be an interesting one and we hope you'll join us then. And we will also post a video of this live on our website and link to that article on um, our blog. Perfect. Thank you.